Hi, Peter. Welcome to our uh, post auction charity auction um, conversation. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, do appreciate uh, your support. Um, and uh, how are things currently? Well, pretty good, really. I mean, um, obviously, we're in extremely strange times. I mean, never experienced anything like that. None of us have in our lifetimes. But um, I've been rather lucky, in fact. I mean, I live in the countryside, and as um, luck would have it, we ended up sort of in a bubble with our uh, two grown-up children and grandchild. So, um, so actually, it's been it, it hasn't been too bad. I feel very sorry for people who are in um, less easy circumstances, you know, in a in a sort of flat in a tower block with children or something it must be a nightmare. But um, it's not been too bad. And actually, I've been working. Work's gone very well. I've decided when the whole lockdown happened. We just got back, my wife and I, from um, five weeks uh, looking at temples and monasteries in South India, and we came back at the beginning of March, straight into this whole crisis. And my small studio team um, were furloughed pretty quickly um, and I went off to a little sort of cabin in the woods on the edge of Dartmoor and, and worked just with hand tools making little small small sculptures on my own and doing drawings which has been absolute absolutely lovely. Yeah I'll bet yeah yeah, yeah. great way to start the year I guess because it must have looked so uncertain to begin with. Absolutely, absolutely. But in fact, it's been it's been a very. I think a lot of people have felt there have been a, a certain sort of silver lining to the thing, and that it's made one have to sort of reappraise, um, you know, how you're running your life and how things mm. are you know, going. And uh, it's been very kind of cathartic in a way for me. It's been good. Mm, I'll bet. No, that's a uh, uh, good news story. I have to say, it hasn't been the right all the all the way around with the artists that uh, I've spoken to in the interim. There's been some, some uh, well, quite depressing stories in actual fact, you know, people, artists locked out of their studios and uh, um, it's been very difficult, I think. For yeah, no, I think it yeah. has. I mean, I feel a little bit guilty that I've had rather a nice time, but, um, <laughs> you know, that's just... Well, you know, that's, that's the luck of the draw, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to get to our subject in hand, if I may. You know, Maggie's uh, charity auction was something that we um, wanted to do uh, a long time ago, and now it seems, and uh, you very kindly have donated a print as the first auction lot, um, Entomology um, 5, isn't it? But um, uh, I think the... Um, what were your reasons for wanting to take part, would you say? Well, I think I've always, I mean, I've never had any um, close contact with the Maggie Centres, but I've always been aware of them. Uh, and I think um, one thing that's come across very strongly right from the beginning is the uh, importance that's been given to um, actually making the buildings and what's within the buildings of the Maggie mm. Centre. Um, not just uh, something which will adequately do the job, but actually something which has um, uh, aesthetic and uh, and um, you know actually is a is a beautiful place to be and somewhere to to actually feel comfortable. I've always been um, uh, very keen on the idea of art in hospitals, and I've done a, a number of projects going right back to the early 1980s, where I did a piece for Leicester Royal Infirmary. Um, and I've done a number of things in hospitals since then. And I think it is, um, of course, you know, uh, one can't, I mean, the, the most important thing are the, are the, the doctors and nurses and the, the staff who are all running it and the, um, you know, and having all the right equipment and so on. But I do think um, actually the psychological and, and uh, mental um, sort of well-being is is a very important aspect and i think oh, definitely yeah. art and, and really really uh, top quality uh, innovative architecture i mean i think is a really important second mm. uh, consideration to oh, brilliant people. innovation isn't it for, for the uh, care of everybody concerned around uh, cancer that's a fact yeah that, and then certainly doing a job that um 
you know, the, the NHS, bless it, would uh, not be able to do at all, really. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. And sorry, it was Entomology 7, in fact, that you've donated. Yes. And was there any particular reason for that, or uh, was it... Uh, I, I like that series. I mean, I think there were about, altogether about 12 of them in the series. Um, and I, I've always been very fond of it. I like the... Um, I suppose I like the balance between the fact that it's got a sort of geometric underpinning. It's it, the, the the image itself is sort of based on a kind of um, a, a pencil drawing of uh, based on sort of Euclidean geometry. So just using a, um, a, a, a compass and a and a straight edge to construct wow. um, to construct a an overall shape. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then mixing that very um, geometric, very sort of tight um, uh, kind of uh, concept of, of, of sort of geometric form with um, something which involves a lot of chance and, and, and random elements, but, yeah. but keep the mirror image symmetry. So I'm sort of combining Euclidean geometry with sort of Rorschach ink blot. You know, you're familiar, I'm sure most people are familiar with the- Sure, yeah. Yeah. Ink test, which has been, you know, it's been um, it's been through fairly rough times in terms of its status in terms of psychoanalysis, I think. But I do think that Rojak was definitely onto something in that mm. um, by bilaterally symmetrical images do seem to make a beeline to the bit of our brain that deals with meaning and expression. Um, mm. and uh, something you know as, as soon as something has mirror image symmetry one starts to conjure faces and bodies and animals and things from it. Oh, I, I think you can see a lot in it can't you definitely uh, yeah. A very straightforward reason for that I think it's that you know we are broadly speaking you know uh, bilaterally symmetrical. We are um, yeah yeah. And I'm sure even uh, you know with a very very young baby they're very much attuned to focusing in on the face and things which have that bilateral symmetry. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, you know, it would be missing a trick as an artist not to exploit that um, way in which it does, uh, you know, bilateral symmetry makes a sort of beeline to the bit of our consciousness that deals with expression and meaning. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but but I also, I mean, I'm, I've been interested for years in the combination of um, a sort of random element with a, with a constructed, um, sort of a, a set of simple rules, if you like. And in, in the case of this print, the rules are the, the initial geometric shape that's laid down very lightly in pencil. Mm. Um, and then the randomness is actually how the ink behaves. I build them up gradually. So I'll put a small blob of ink um, into the pattern and then fold it and then add. So I build it up gradually. Um, and I think when one looks at at uh, the natural world, whether it's uh, plants or animals. Um, of course, we see a great deal of that bilateral symmetry or symmetry of various kinds, but we also see nature um, as, a, as a kind of, in a sort of dynamic tension between a, a, a ubiquitous sort of tendency for, um, for spontaneous pattern formation, which just seems to be how things are, um, mm. but it's combined with an, equally ubiquitous tendency for random variation which we also yeah. see throughout nature so you can perceive the underlying platonic ideal if you like in in terms in, in those sort of terms but yeah. also the variation um is the bit that makes life worth living almost <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and so yeah. over the years i've tried to, to to find ways of working which combine a structuring element um with something that I'm not in control of um, mm -hmm. and I, I, in a way not copying so much something in nature but trying to um, uh, trying to actually um, work in the same sort of manner in which nature creates things so combining um, this business of, of order and, and uh, randomness which mm -hmm. of course is what drives the evolutionary process I, mean, I was going to say it sounds very evolutionary you know nothing uh, would yeah. If it was only random variation, well, I can't imagine what that would mean. But but yeah. that wonderful magical um, uh, combination of the two mm. produces the seemingly in infinite variety of forms that we see in the natural world. 
Yeah, very much. Yeah. Well, on to my next one. Thank, thanks for that. Um, the inspiration is always d difficult. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I was talking to an artist this morning uh, before our conversation and uh, she, she was definitely struggling with some in for inspiration currently. Um, do you, would you say that is more so in a, in a difficult um, period of, that we're going through, like uh, the COVID in viruses? Um, I haven't found that myself. I mean, oh, I right. think, uh, you know, uh, for me, well, very often um, one piece of work will lead on to another piece of work. So while oh. I'm making something, I'll think, well, it'd be quite interesting to try you know, on the next... You're, you're evolving so think, with it, yes. Exactly. So the, and, and then I think really um, inspiration for me is just, um, you know, taking, uh, taking the time to, um, you know, to stand and stare, as the poet said, you know, mm. I think uh, just noticing things. And, of course, um, you know, we're surrounded by the most incredible beautiful um you know sort of breathtakingly beautiful things even even if you're not in a beautiful place i mean i'm lucky to be in the countryside but mm. even in a city all you've got to do is have a uh, a magnifying glass and and start looking at things that are wriggling around in the garden or mm. growing in the garden or you know um or, or equally to look at you know to have a, a telescope and point it at the sky um you know, it's uh, inspiration is, I think, for me, is just sort of kind of noticing things, really, and, um, mm. and wondering how they came to be that way. Yeah. No, I think you can always find beauty if you want, can't you, really? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. 